Elena's Experiments, brought to you by Chevron. Working to improve the quality of life in Kern County by supporting educational opportunities for local students. Every Monday, we love bringing in local educators and STEM enthusiasts to share some ideas for experiments and demonstrations you can do at home, likely using things you have just laying around the house or things that you can easily grab. These are adorable, by the way. We have Justin Jansen, a STEM program specialist with the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, with today's demonstration. These are so cute. Yes, talking about shopping and all of the right. goodies and things. We went from Cabbage Patch dolls to these uh, little robots <laughs> Modern now. Robots. But uh, as teachers, we're always looking at that. Um, you know, we're teaching the student inside the classroom now, but we need to prepare them for the future they're entering, in, entering ten years or so from now, and where are things going with computers. Absolutely. So. Uh, CS Ed Week is a huge kind of nationwide thing of really um, bringing to attention the computer sciences in the classroom for the kiddos and what they'll need. And one thing that all kids love to do is coding. So when we yes. think of computer science, we think of coding. Well, coding doesn't have to happen on the computer right away. We can do something called unplug. So I'm going to do a quick unplugged activity with okay. you, and then we're going to use our robots to do that. Yay. So. With coding and robots, one thing we have to know is robots are extremely literal. Okay. They are like young kids. They'll do exactly what you tell them. So we have to make sure when we're coding, we're doing things exactly how you're told. So I'm going to give you some instructions for that paper real quick, okay. and you're going to do exactly what I say without any questions on there. Okay. Just like a good little robot here. Right. So my kids always have a million questions. So exactly. I'll try my best. Exactly. <laughs> and I know we have to, at one point, we're like, we're acting like a computer on mm -hmm. this one. So first one, I want you to draw a medium sized circle in the middle of the paper. A medium medium sized what is me I'm not allowed to ask no, questions yeah. <laughs> by the way this mr. sketch is it's always the smelly ones you have like to have them. I love yes it. Okay. Exactly. okay now you're gonna draw a medium sized triangle above the circle medium the size. bottom of the triangle should just touch the top of the circle should touch okay so triangle and I made it about the same size because you said medium medium and now draw three small stars anywhere inside the triangle Ooh. And again, at home, you may have this different way that you're interpreting right. these directions as well. Now that you have that, draw a small triangle in the center of the circle. Small triangle in the center of the circle. After you're done with that, draw an arc which curves up below the small triangle. Arc like that, a rainbow? That above the small triangle. Oh, in the circle. And then finally, draw two small circles okay. above the small triangle, one slightly to the right and one slightly to the left. Oh, above but to the left and right. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to go so here ish. Now you can show what did we have. And the original sketch should have looked like this. So you oh, can it's like see. Oh, like a clown. I see. But you can see the instructions that are given need to be very specific. So I could have been more specific with those instructions. And actually, I may have said the arc above the triangle, so I just had a bug. I need to be debugged. <laughs> so now that we have that, that's an unplugged activity. Cool. Let's bring it to our robots. So okay. this is our friend Kubo. Kubo's a robot that loves to follow directions. And the directions they follow are these tiles. Cute. So you can see you have different tiles that have arrows on them. And you can lay them out, they go just like puzzle pieces. And what you're actually doing is you're creating a code. You're telling this robot where to move. And if you're using the forward ones, it's telling the robot to move so go forward. forward. And you can also see that there's some that point either 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right. right. And Put each one on has there. this little computer chip and on the back. And on the back, it has a computer chip. And that way, when you put Mr. Kubo on it, it beep. <gasps> He's going to follow cute. what you're giving them. So this is a coding activity we use with young kids. We actually use it as our, at our STEM camps out at the museum in Calm Zoo. And what they're getting, they're getting the idea that, okay, if I want this robot to do something, I need to tell it each specific step. Mm -hmm. Then they bring it to the computer and they get onto a coding site like Scratch or uh, Make Code, and they'll actually write the code that a computer would follow. That's so neat. They continue to do this throughout their schools. They go into um, computer science, and now they're writing millions of lines of code yes. that run simple things like our weather app on the phone, exactly. or the KGT, uh, the KGT, the um, 
app on our uh, iPhone as well. It all starts, though, with just this basic idea that we need to tell the computer a single line of code at a time. And very literal. And mm -hmm. you would think coding is, is way too advanced, but like you said, the kids love it. They love yes. the, the building and the puzzle of it. And this is just fascinating. Yes, I love it. Yes, I am always uh, I'm bombarded with my kids saying, please bring these back home right. whenever we I have to do more. something. So yes. how do I spell QO to add to cart? <laughs> K-U-B-O, yes. Oh, Justin, thank you so much. No, this is you. very cool. We're going to be right back with news from around the world.